Look, layoffs are happening everywhere. Even I was impacted. As someone like myself, everybody knows for the most part that Danae stayed with a job. And although I am interviewing and although I am open to what I'm hearing, I am chilling for the most part since I am focused on other things that really align with my passions. However, I know how it is to really want a job ASAP. So if you really want some tips, then this video is definitely for you. I'm not playing by the Hello everyone, my name is Danae Anaya. If you do not know me by now, then I discuss all things self-help, lifestyle, and music. And with all these things, I really want to help you elevate and become your best self in the ways that are, I feel like, very passionate and deep for me. Yeah, if you are coming back, then thank you again for tuning back in and I really appreciate you. Okay, so like I said earlier, I've always stayed with a job. I've never really um, been out of a job for long. People that know me me knows that I've even edited resumes. I still do resumes. I have my own business called Upgrade My Resume. Honestly, though, I did take a chill pill from that because, you know, I started that during a pandemic and I really just needed some extra money because I knew I was good at doing resumes. But if anybody is still interested in a resume, I do tell people, you know, just hit me up, DM me, text me, email me. I am still available. Even if you want me to just look over your resume, I would do that as well. I love to see people get more money. Um, I love to see people get employment. I love to see people, you know, just upgrade their, their positions. I love that for people. So I really want to give you the tools today to tell you what I would do if I was really going hard for a job, if I really needed one immediately. So yes, this is what I would do. Now for starters, of course, I would definitely upgrade my own resume. I would definitely review it. So I meet with a career advisor um, temporarily right now, and she is teaching me a lot of things that I like, you know, like a little wake up call for me to a lot of things that I thought I was doing right that she is telling me to really work on. So for the most part, when it comes to your resume, I would highly advise you just to really keep it as simple as possible. One thing she taught me is that, of course, the applicant tracking system. So when you submit your resume through LinkedIn, through Indeed or whatever else, like it goes through, of course, the ATS applicant tracking system and it needs to it's going to read your resume. You really want to keep your resume as basic as possible and easily readable without too many lines and too much graphics going on because it'll be harder for the system to really read your qualifications and match you over to the recruiter. This is something that I've even recently learned. I, I'm someone who's big on design and creativity so this was a wake-up call for me but yeah you really want to keep it as simple as possible to be easily readable. Of course list your, your education. Make sure you always stay consistent with the money in a year, the kind of degree you got or the kind of diploma you got, list of certifications, really make those things relevant to the job that you are applying to. Um, and then, you know, if you want to do a professional summary, that's definitely up to you. But with professional summaries, I'll get straight to the point. I wouldn't really put things like I am. I will put things like expertise in doing this, that, and the third, um, or experienced in these programs. I am gonna make another video soon that's gonna really break down everything I would do on a resume, but this is just like kinda of like the surface level of what I'm talking about. And then I would definitely list my skills. With a lot of resumes that I have done, I have not seen skills like that. I've had to like list the skills in myself or I would see people really like undermine their own skills. So what you really want to do with your skill section is really like look into all the jobs you had, look into what you did and make sure that um, reflects in your skill set. So if you were someone who worked at a nursing home and you took care of the elderly, then you really want to make sure that you have caretaking in your skill set. That's a skill. So do not overlook things like that. Or say if you have like uh, something on your resume, like a bullet point that says uh, manually entered uh, documents or manually enter manually typed in data into into the computer but you got to be descriptive about what you use what did you use what system what software did you use to manually type that 
um, information into the system? Did you use Microsoft Excel? What what did you use? Did you use some kind of platform that your job have? Like, so you really got to be descriptive. And if you do, then you have experience in Microsoft Excel. So in your skill set, make sure you put Microsoft Excel, make Microsoft Office Suites. I do, you know, Word. What I'll usually do is Microsoft Office Suites and I'll put Word, comma, Excel, comma, PowerPoint. You really do not want to overlook your skills because your skills are so important and that's very important within the applicant tracking system because we see it on these job boards and with these you know we apply it with the skills that they are looking for so you really want to make sure you are highlighting those skills or your skills on your resume so now moving along now to the body you know to um, all the jobs you have when we're doing these bullet points please make sure you put your job title make sure you put the company make sure you put the the month and year that you started and the month and year that it ended or if you are still there put the month and year that you are uh, that you started and then put dash current or present whatever you want to put but then in those bullet points those bullet points need to at least be about a sentence long like and i'm not talking about like uh you know like i'm not talking about five five words i'm talking about like a little like literally a line long like do not be like oh um i help put the like if you do delivery do not put i help put the delivery shipment on top of the truck and that's it period like what did this do how did this help the company like you gotta put like what was your purpose when people are reading your resume they want to know what was your purpose how did you benefit the company how did the company really need you what impact did you make to the company because if you're just saying you load on boxes onto a delivery truck then it's like all right what did that do for anybody like what was the purpose of that so for example you can put consistently loaded boxes onto the delivery truck to um excel or to uh oh my god i'm thinking from the top of my head to expedite customers getting their products like something like that like you know i'm thinking from the top of my head so excuse me but like you get what i'm talking about like to to expedite customers product to them like you know like that was the purpose of you quickly and consistently loading on those products into the delivery truck so you with all those bullet points that you have underneath every job please make sure you put the purpose please make sure you put like how did this company need you and even my career advisor like i had that on my resume but she really like made me like really push myself even more to really give my purpose and to really give like what I did. Throughout my career, I've been like an admin assistant, executive assistant. So you know that comes with supporting like vice presidents, senior vice presidents and et cetera, you know, um, chief executive officers, stuff like that. And I, at one of my jobs, I was usually supporting the VPs who would join the company. And I would pretty much like, um, I would say, onboard them into the company so of course we had hr but i would really help them get settled into the company like as far as like making sure they had their corporate cars making sure their travel profile was set up making sure they was just good so with that it was like i had to rephrase it to be like um i helped them with this because it helped them effectively do their job and sell into the company like if that really makes sense it's like i wrote that but i didn't really put that in a good way for them to really like get how important I was to that new person joining the company, if that makes sense. She really made me like detail it out to really show my importance of helping these new people get into the company and really get settled in. From me doing this, it helped them expedite and to get comfortable within a company, which helped them to do their job, which helped the company become even more successful. Also, too, with every job you have on your resume, as far as the bullet points, you should at least have three bullet points underneath every job. Like, do not have like one bullet point. I don't even think two is good. Minimum three. Three, I don't think any more than five, honestly. When people read your resume, they want to get straight to the point. You know, going on and on about the same thing you've been doing. Like, it gets it gets redundant. It gets boring. That's how they be like, next. So you really want to make it as interesting with every bullet point as much as possible. Show the diversity of every job you had. Show the di Even if you did the same job, show some kind of difference with every job you did. Like, was you managing more people at one job? Was you um, taking on more duties at another? 
another job, even if you have the same position. So if you was a delivery driver your whole career for the most part, what does you do different at every job? And if you can't think of it, then think of something, okay? It gotta be something that you did differently at every job. Or you could be like, I oversaw more people at this job and make sure you put the number of people too. I oversaw 10 plus people. These recruiters, these people wanna see what you did. They wanna really like envision how your day-to-day -day was like. And if you want to add volunteer experience, then that's totally cool as well. And as far as the pages on a resume, you can, I prefer one. Right now I do have a two-page resume due to how long I've been working and my experience. But if you don't really need a two page resume, I would highly suggest one page. My career advisor told me that it's okay I have two. It gives me anxiety that I have um, two pages, but it is what it is. I was cramming the hell out my resume on one page because I hated two pages. But again, right now I have a two page resume and I'm getting used to it. All right, another thing is please update your LinkedIn. Like people, overlook LinkedIn so much. You guys, I've gotten like three jobs from LinkedIn. I kid you not. And one of those jobs is a top level media company that y'all all know, media tech company that y'all all know. I got it from LinkedIn. <laughs> okay. Like I had a recruiter reach out to me at first. It was a contract role. And then I went permanent at that job. So LinkedIn, okay, recruiters will reach out to you. You just got to put that you are open to work and you got to let, um, it's like a button on there where recruiters can see you open to work and they will know to like, you know, reach out to you and stuff. Again, recruiters will slide in your DMs, <laughs> okay? They will slide in your DMs with opportunities like every day. I'm, it, I mean, honestly, with me not to brag, but I get recruiters hitting me up every day about different opportunities. Like I get, I'm telling you like, Utilize your LinkedIn. Make sure your LinkedIn is presentable too. So make sure that your picture, your you know, your profile picture does not have to be some kind of like professional headshot. My LinkedIn is definitely not a professional headshot, but it's very clear. You can see me. I'm smiling. I don't have a shirt showing cleavage or anything unprofessional. Like it looks good. You could have something like plain in your your background. What's that thing called? I totally forgot, but I'm gonna show it as well. I have amplified black voices. Real common, real simple, and it's a part of LinkedIn. I just threw that up there because it was cute. It was nice. Power to the people, right? Um, but yeah, like that's what I would have. And definitely within your title, what I'm learning as well is that you could put more titles, especially if you want to tailor like another kind of job. So say if you're like in clerical work, you can be like clerical work. Uh, content writer. You can put different titles as long as it aligns with what you want to do and even some of your experience, then it's totally okay. You know, just add in your job experiences, update you about me, you know, add in your jobs and your job titles. It's up to you if you want to copy and paste stuff from your resume and put it on your LinkedIn. It's really up to you. Um, I mean, I, I get if somebody do want to do it, if they don't want to do it. If you don't want to do it, it's because I get it. You probably want to be more secretive and some some people on LinkedIn will literally copy and paste your stuff and whatever you wrote and probably put it on their own resume. So that's one thing that can happen too. People be desperate, so they probably will copy everything you put on your LinkedIn and put it on your own resume. If you don't really care about that kind of risk, then that's cool as well. All you're really doing is putting stuff from your resume on your LinkedIn. Adding your skills as well, adding the top skills that you really like about yourself or the skills that you want people to really notice about you fast due to like the field you want to get into or due to what you currently do. Like make sure you put those skills, you could rearrange your skills too. You could put the top skills like, you know, that you really like at the top and then, you know, a volunteer work. I mean, you could, again, you could literally put your whole resume on your LinkedIn page. This is how you really get yourself seen. Another thing too is do not be scared to add people like do not be scared to get connections wherever you used to work at start adding people or if you see somebody post something that you like then you can add them the more connections you have the more word of mouth the more like networking the more connections the more opportunities you could possibly get from that so the more people you have on your LinkedIn the better I mean they even have LinkedIn learning you can learn like a skill that you always wanted to learn I don't know if it's free I know it's free with the old job I had but I'm not sure if it's just free you could do LinkedIn premium if you want. I don't do it. I don't do it. I used to do it when it was free. I think they give you a free trial. But once that free trial ended, I was like deuces. I think it's like $50 a month. Yeah, um, but it's up to you, you know, whatever you want to do.
and go hard like you know go hard with applying i i will go hard with applying especially when i really want a job asap i go hard okay i will spend like an hour or two it was times when i would get laid off or fired and i would spend my whole day applying to jobs or i'll be up first thing in the morning applying to jobs that'll be the first thing i did when i woke up and the last thing i did before i went to bed however if you notice that after about a week or two you are not getting any kind of calls or hit ups or emails or anything or the hit ups that you do get are like what is this then I would say update your resume a lot of trial and error y'all like yo you don't know how many times where i would apply to so many jobs and i would not get any hit ups no callbacks no nothing i would go back into my resume and that's how i learned how to do resume because i would literally keep going back into my own resume editing things editing things and it's before chat gpt it's before ai okay i would literally have to use my critical thinking skills and think what would i want to see if i was a recruiter well, what I want to see if I was a job, I would want to see this, that, and the third. So I will keep going back into my resume and editing and editing and editing. Every time I didn't get a hit up after like a week or two, editing, editing. Like that's, again, that's how I learned how to become so good with resumes because I kind of learned how to manipulate my words to really make people want to, you know, hit me up immediately. Like it really got to the point in my life, y'all. Like if I was not getting an email or a phone call, the next within the next day or two after applying to jobs i will go back into my resume and re-edit again and again until i got what i wanted okay like i'm relentless okay so that's how i learned over time so do what you gotta do like don't sit back waiting for nobody go hard edit what you gotta edit and if you need help i'm here like if you want to send me your resume i'm here i know how it is to be messed up financially and you need a job you know i get it like trust me i get it so if you want me to look over it for free then please email me at upgrade my resume dot business at gmail dot com and i will give you pointers for free seriously because i get it i get how hard it can be to really want your resume like um to really want a job immediately and you really don't have the funds to put out of course if you want your resume edited and fixed up then of course that will come with a fee but to look over it it would not i would not charge y'all for that i mean number four i've been talking about my career advisor throughout this whole video but if you can afford it if you can do it get a career advisor let them look over your resume even if you book them one time two times whatever again i have mine for about three months so that's really a great amount of time for me to really learn things and really tailor up my own resume and really learn how to even work LinkedIn. She's helping me with everything. But I would definitely recommend getting a career advisor. Like the career services I use is called LHH. I don't know what that really stands for. Definitely look into career services and have someone specifically give you expert advice about what you can do. And then lastly, I'll just put myself out there. I would tell people that, you know, you are looking for work. I would just network. I would go to places if you can afford it. I would just really put myself out there. Sometimes they're not what you know. Sometimes who you know can really put you on to something. But put yourself out there. You know, elevate your people's skills, if anything, if you are a shy person. Uh, learn stuff too. Learn new skills. Learn new stuff. Like the more you learn, the more you earn. I always say that. So learn while you can. I mean, like YouTube is free 99 you don't even gotta pay to even learn anything on youtube you could learn a whole damn course on youtube okay they even got udemy for you to get classes they got so many things out there so many tools for you to really learn and elevate your skill set to the point that people will need you okay when you are needed it is always in demand okay you are always going to be in demand so definitely become a person that people need anyways i gotta go i hope this video was helpful again if you have been impacted by layoffs if you was recently let go or it's just been really hard for you to find a new job then i am definitely rooting for you i know how i i know it could be tough and you got this and even while you are waiting for any of these jobs to call you back do your own thing again learn you can learn and try to make your own money while you waiting for jobs to call you back okay like they got sites like upwork and fiverr if you want to like really like if you know a skill you can literally charge people on those kind of sites to 
have them pay for your skills. I mean, like you can edit podcasts, you know, everybody and their mama doing podcasts. You can even edit YouTube videos if you learn. Like people are paying for people to edit their YouTube videos. Okay, like it's so much things out there, y'all. I'm gonna make a whole other video for the incomes, for the things that you can do on the side, but I really wanna take care of the job aspect for now. But while you are waiting for these jobs to call you back, do not wait on nobody, all right? No, never wait on nobody. And I've learned that the hard way. If you are in America, which is where I'm from, then you know this is really the land of opportunity. Take advantage of that. No one's gonna give anything to you. Do not rely on the government. Don't rely on none of that. You are the only one that could really be in control of your financial future. Read, do what you gotta do, elevate your skill set, and make money from it, okay? While you are waiting for one of these nine to five jobs to call you back, all right? Time waits on no one. Go get the money. The money is waiting for you. Just gotta go get it, all right? So I love y'all as always. Be safe, be well. I wish you the best of luck in your job search. I wish you the best of luck in your money um, situation in general, whatever you want to do. I wish you the absolute best luck. This world is tough and we all know we need money and whatever I could do to help. The more I learn, the more I'm going to teach y'all. Thank you for watching and until next time, y'all. Bye. This is